nice start. Good afternoon, everyone. We're having a great time at FBIT so far. So my name is Yang Shun, and I'm a front-end engineer at Facebook. Today, we'll be talking about using Docusaurus to create open source websites. <clears throat> so the agenda for today's session, firstly, I'll go through the background and motivation of building Docusaurus. Next, uh, we'll look at some of the features of Docusaurus. And lastly, we'll have a hands-on session where we can build our first Docusaurus website. So let me get to know you guys. How, how many of you are project maintainers? So you have built your own open source project before, maintain a project at work. I see a few hands here. So how many of you wrote documentation for your project? OK, I see equal number of hands. That is, that's good. And how many of you built websites for your documentation? Oh, that's fewer hands. So we looked at the top 20 GitHub projects uh, on GitHub, and we found an interesting trend. 20% of the top 20, uh, 20 GitHub projects have documentation using README files. 80% of them have documentation using websites. And none of them have no documentation, meaning all of them have documentation. So I think by now we can tell how important documentation is for the success of a project. So in our experience, documentation websites help projects provide a better user experience for their users. So I think many of us would agree that having a website for a project would be nice, but there are many reasons why, as a project maintainer, I might not want to do so. So building a website for a project can be time consuming. I have to select a CSS framework. I have to design a logo for it. I have to build the necessary components to, for the website, uh, et cetera. They are not core to the website, to the project. So writing documentation can be a pain sometimes, or really all the time. Um, it's also quite troublesome to add useful features like versioning, search, and a navigation hierarchy. These are stuff that, as a web, uh, project maintainer, um, they are not core to the project, and I would be less likely to do them if it takes up a lot of my time. So this is how I feel every time I have to build a website for my projects. It's time consuming, and I get frustrated really easily. Introducing Docusaurus. So Docusaurus is a static site generator to help you easily build websites. So, um, so at Facebook, we have a few hundred open source projects, and many of them require documentation. So readme's are insufficient for, for a documentation because they don't provide the necessary user experience that uh, a documentation deserves, such as an ordered hierarchy of, um, of pages, and then uh, like search, translations, versioning. So traditionally, at Facebook, we use a Jacko template, which is also a very famous static site generator, to build our documentation websites. But that didn't scale for us because of the reasons I mentioned earlier. We, we still needed, because Jacko is still a static site generator, we still need to build our own um, documentation-specific features. So Facebook created Docusaurus, which is a static, a static site generator targeted at building uh, websites for documentation. So a lot of our Facebook open source projects currently use Docusaurus. So some of the features of Docusaurus. You can write Markdown, your, your documentation in Markdown. So Markdown is a syntax that compiles to HTML, and it's really easy to write, even for non-technical folks. So you, you just have to write some Markdown, and Docusaurus will compile them to HTML together with navigation, sidebar, and stuff. And next, we have search. So Docusaurus does not provide search out of the box, but we integrate with Algolia, which is a search as a service provider, to help you easily integrate search into your documentation websites. You just have to sign up at Algolia, um, use an API key into, into your website configuration, and you get a very uh, fast and responsive search experience. So Facebook's mission is to give people the power to build communities and bring the world closer together. And 
one of the ways we can do that is by using localization. So look, by localizing a website, meaning to translate your website into different languages um, around the world, you can lower the barrier to entry for developers whose native, native language is not English. And you can translate your documentation um, to different languages. So we partner with Crowdin, which is a translation service uh, to help you crowdsource your translations. Also, React is one of the most popular open source projects by Facebook, and a lot of developers these days know React. So we have used, we're using React as a templating uh, language to let you customize the layout and the feel of your DocuSaurus website. Last but not least, we have versioning. Have you experienced the frustrating, uh, frustrating experience of looking at documentation, trying out in your code and realizing that, hey, it does not really match with the doc the document what the documentation says. That's probably because there's a version mismatch between the, the library or the code you're using and the, docu the document that you are referring to. So with versioning, you can sync your code and your documents together. You can also hide the, the documentation that is not released yet from your users. So this sounds too good to be true, right? You, you may not believe me, but, and you may not have built a DocuSource website for yourself yet, but I'm sure you have used or uh, uh, browsed a DocuSource website before. So as I said earlier, DocuSource powers some of the most powerful, some of the most famous uh, open source projects by Facebook, such as React Native, Create React App, Babel, which is a JavaScript compiler, and Prettier, which is an open-ended code formatter. So all these sites, they are powered by DocuSaurus. And you can tell they look kind of similar. They have the same navigation structure and stuff. So DocuSaurus would not have been um, what it is today without the uh, hundreds of hours of effort by a lot of um, maintainers and open source contributors. So I'd like to give a shout out to Joy and Dili, who have been uh, extremely crucial to the development of DocuSaurus. So let's, move, let's go on to a demo session. So if you have a computer with you now, we can, we can, um, we can try out the, the demo together. So you can go to docusaurus.io, which is uh, our DocuSaurus homepage, access the tutorial. And here we, we have detailed instructions on how to get started on building your, your own Docu, DocuSaurus website. So I'll, I'll walk through a, a small demo with you now on launching your first DocuSaurus website. So firstly, let's create a, a GitHub uh, repository for the documentation. Uh, okay. So you can leave the rest empty. You can leave the rest empty. Uh, okay. Let's go. Let me know if it's too small. OK. So I'm done creating the repository. I'm create my account. I can, create, I can download the, the, the repo. Okay. So if you have not installed Docusaurus yet, you can you can grab it from um, you can grab it from npm by using doc, npm install Docusaurus in it, <coughs> or use yarn if you if you have yarn. Um, since I have it now, I can I can straight away run it. Takes a while to download all the library code for for your website. <coughs> Demos usually don't go well, but I hope mine goes well today. OK, so these are the files generated for you. You, you can see that there are a few documentation files, websites, um, pages, and images. So I'll use um, VS Code to edit my website. So OK. So with one command, we already have a working website up and running. So we can do. Uh, I'll go into the, the website folder first. With one command, we will run the website locally. And there we have it, our first DocuSource website. So when you first generate it, it's empty. But you can see that we have, we have already included some nice images for you. And they are all customized to the team color, which is 
randomly generated. So you can see that that's a, that's a documentation, example documentation pages with a navigation hierarchy. And there's even a blog quoted for you here. So let me go back to the documentation. So you okay, can see that uh, the page updates live. Okay, let me. Okay. So let me say, let me change it. You can see that your documentation is updated instantly. So this provides you with a very um, great developer experience. As you write a documentation, you can see how can in they look uh, view how it looks like at, on your website. So over here. Okay. So let's create a new web a new page now. So on our, do our documentation, we provide you with very convenient copy buttons. So let's create a page called Hello World. Hello World.js. <clears throat> and then I can co copy the, paste the component here. And we restart the server. And it's easy, as easy as that. You can create a new JavaScript file and that translates to a new page. With a, with, so if you create folders within that folder, it becomes the routes in the, in the URL and you can easily create hierarch navigation hierarchies using that. Okay, let's create a new documentation website, docu documentation page now. So uh, I'll create a page called F8 and then um, so as I mentioned earlier, you can write your documentation page using Markdown. So the, the top is the front matter, where you inject some metadata about your, your documentation page. And next, I'll edit the F8 site, F8 page into my navigation hierarchy, which is in this sidebars file. F8, done. Okay, I'll have to restart the server. And now the page appears here. So hi, FA, I'm, I'm at a Docker service classroom session. OK, cool. So this is um, what we have so far. I've created two new pages to a Docker service website. So let's publish it and go live to the rest of the world. Um, publishing is really easy. You have to firstly uh, change the configuration in, your, in the config file. You can enable or disable most things from this file. So over here, I'll change the, the URL. So if you're using GitHub, it would be, uh, it would be your username.github.io. Your base URL would be the, the, the repo name, which is Docker Source. For here, Docker Source Classroom. Project, si project name can be anything. I'll just call it Docker Source Classroom. An organization name, if you are using your personal account, it will be just um, your user, GitHub username. So, with this, I can publish my website. Uh, with one command. Okay, it says it's live now. Let's verify. Oops. 
did I typo something somewhere? Uh, ah, okay, it takes a while to load. So, so there, I have my first Docusource website published on the World Wide Web within a matter of 10 minutes. So I hope that through this session, you realize that how easy it is to build a Docusource website. And Docusource uh, can be used for any website you want, not just documentation. And we'll be launching a new version of Docusaurus in the coming, um, coming few months, which brings even greater features like um, client-side rendering and uh, adult mode. So I can show, have, let you have a preview of the new website that we have. So it looks the same now, but the documentation is extremely performant. And one of our maintainers even used uh, Use, the, use it to build his own blog that comes with a dark mode. So dark mode will be supported out of the box in the new Docusaurus. So that's it uh, from me. So if you have any, if you have any qu uh, questions, I'll be, I'll be right by the, the side of the stage. Thank you for your time. <laughs>